So NVIDIA has launched a new development kit that goes along with its latest Jetson module, that's the Jetson Thor. What you get is a development kit with lots of ports like HDMI, Display Port, Ethernet, all that kind of stuff. And at the heart of it is the T5000 module, which gives you a big load of Blackwell, that's the RTX 50 series GPU cores, and then a healthy dose of ARM cores. Along the way, we're going to see some of this. And we're also going to look at some robotics like this. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So the Jetson Thor development kit. Now, why is it development kit? Because really it's made up of two things. This is the Jetson Thor module, and that is what NVIDIA wants to sell, and it wants it to be incorporated in robotic systems, AI systems as a module with some bespoke hardware around it. And their bespoke hardware in this particular case is the development kit, so a box that gives you things like HDMI output and ethernet and so many other things we will get into. And it then comes into a handy box. So your developers who are developing AI and robotic systems to go with this module have a convenient way to do the development. So as I said, this is the module. And the point is here is this Blackwell uh, chip, which in this case is the NVIDIA GPU, the same as we find in the RTX 50 series, and then it's combined with some ARM CPUs. We'll get all into the spec just now. So there are two types of module available. There's the T5000 and the T4000. Basically the T4000 is the smaller version of the T5000. We'll just highlight some of the differences. So the T5000 has got 2560 uh, NVIDIA CUDA cores for the Blackwell architecture. I said the same as the RTX 50 line, whereas there are less CUDA cores in the T in the 4000. You've got 14 ARM Neoverse V3. So of course, ARM Neoverse is the server chips from ARM. So this is high bandwidth, high performance, 64-bit chips, one megabyte of L2 cache per core, 16 megabytes shared L3, 12 cores only in the T4. That's 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, uh, 64 gigabytes in the small one. That's 273 giga bytes a second bandwidth there. You've got all kinds of storage options, including NVMe through PCI, and then of course what you can connect via USB 3.2. You've got four 25 gigabit ethernet connections, and its power goes between 40 watts and 130 watts, depending on what um, software configuration in. You can put it in different software configurations. Of course, the lower the power, there is going to be a drop in performance. Okay, so this is basically the development kit. You've got this uh, Jetson uh, T5000 Thor 5000 module with a Blackwell GPU. There's the module. Okay, and then that connects to a small motherboard, which gives you access to a one terabyte NVMe drive that's included in there, Wi-Fi 6, USB ports, display port, HDMI, and so on. And then there's also a heat sink and fan system set up here. And when you put it all together, you've got a great development box that can develop for this uh, Jetson Thor module. So just looking at the developer kit. So again, the same CPU and GPU and memory as we've discussed, but now there is a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive via an M2 slot, so that's included in development kit. The way they've split out the ethernet is you've got one five gigabit uh, RJ45, so your twisted pair uh, ethernet uh, that way. And then you've got also a QSFP28 uh, connector, which allows you to have greater speed. Now you've also got HDMI display port, USB 3.2, USB-C, there's a CAN bus, there's a microfit power jack, so all the things you get on the module are then kind of linked out to the different peripherals and things that you'd actually want on a development kit. So what is it for? Well, this is not a PC. They're not selling you this as a home PC or even as a studio PC. It's a developer device for the T5000 module that actually ends up looking a lot like a PC because you can connect a HDMI monitor to it, keyboard, mouse. It runs Linux, runs a, a flavor of Ubuntu Linux, for the uh, development kit, 
but it's not a PC. It's a platform for physical uh, AI and robotics. And here's the kind of a graphic that NVIDIA have got where here you can see there is a T5000 module there, a T5000 module there, uh, and it's controlling a robot. Now it's got high speed sensor processing because of all those CUDA cores, because of those CPU cores. And because of all that networking, you can do things like connect it to NVIDIA's hollow scan sensor bridge, which is a way they have of basically using ethernet and then it talks to sensors. You can talk to, uh, you know, motors and actuators and all that kind of stuff, but you can kind of do it over the ethernet for the high speed and the last few centimeters, it switches over to the wiring for whatever particular sensors or, or motors you're using. You also get access to uh, NVIDIA's AI software, which includes NVIDIA Isaac, and Groot, and we're gonna go into those, give you a demo of those uh, in a moment. And of course, it's also got spatial intelligence, that's visual for vision. So you can create visual AI agents. Uh, and for example, I'm gonna show you this video summarization and search demo in a minute. And that's all running on the T5000 module inside the development kit. Now, of course, when you hear of NVIDIA, there is going to be the question. It's got a Blackwell GPU in it, the same GPU architecture as we get in the RTX 50 series. Is it any good for gaming? Well, as I've said, this is not a PC. It's not a gaming PC. It runs Linux. It doesn't run Windows. Okay, And it's got ARM cores, not x86 cores. Having said that, here's a demo of Doom 3, which is open source. So I was able to recompile it. Here's a demo of Doom 3 running on the Jetson 4. Okay, so there's no point having just hardware. You've got to have some software to run it. And so NVIDIA are investing heavily in AI and robotic software. So Isaac Sim offers a physically accurate virtual environment for robot development. Now think about it. When we're doing normal software development, we might have debuggers. We might have emulators. For example, if you do Android development, you're not going to have to download it onto an Android device every time you run your program. It runs in an emulator on your PC. So Isaac Sim is basically the equivalent of debugger and emulator for the robotic world. It enables the simulation and testing of AI-driven robots under realistic physics, sensor modeling, and with digital twins. So basically, the uh, Jensen 4 thinks it's actually connected to a real world robot and it gets camera images from there and it gets sensors and it can control the robot's movement, but it's all happening in a in virtual environment. So there's high fidelity physics and there is sensor simulation. And Groot is a platform developed to accelerate humanoid robotics using general purpose foundation models, that's AI models, and advanced data pipeline. So Groot N1 is an open source generalistic foundation model for humanistic robots, okay, and, uh, and you can run the Groot N1 model on the Thor, and you can have another PC that is emulating the physical environment, and they talk to each other just like they would in the physical world, but we're doing it now in the virtual world, which means you don't have to have every developer in your corporation, in your, pro in your startup, in your project, doesn't need to have its own physical robot, you can do it in simulation. So this is the demo I'm about to show you. So you've got the Jetson 4 here, the development kit, and it's running the Groot N1 module. And then you've got uh, Isaac Sim running on a PC uh, with an RTX graphics card in it. And it's emulating all the physical stuff of the real world. All these things are emulated individually. This little beaker, the tray, the little motors in the hands of the robot, the camera, they're all emulated, okay? Almost like a 3D first person game, okay? And then it talks to the model and says, what, do you, what should I do next? And the model comes back and tells it what to move. And you get this kind of loop going around here of you know, sensor input, input, and then it does some inference and works out what it should do next. Okay, so here we are on a Linux machine running Ubuntu and it has an NVIDIA RTX graphics card and it's running Isaac Sims. So this is the virtual world simulation. The robot here has to pick up the red tube, pour its contents into the yellow beaker and then put the yellow beaker onto the scales and then it resets and starts again. But all the actions here are being controlled by the Jetson Thor. It's not happening on the PC. These are all coming from the Jetson Thor and it is actually sending all of the different motor commands to the simulation. 
And here you can see the camera input that's being sent to the Jetson Thor. So that picture on the right is the camera in the head of the robot, and it's actually being sent to the Jetson Thor, and that's how it's deciding what it needs to do next to move the hands, to pick things up and put them in the right place. So it's an absolutely brilliant way of doing the work that you need to simulate uh, in the real world without having to build a real robot, and the Jetson Thor is controlling it all. Now, another example of what Jensen Thor can do is video search and summarization. So VSS acts as an intelligent add-on to any existing computer vision pipeline. So computer vision today is great at object detection, object outlining, for example. So you can see boxes on a conveyor belt. You can see people and cars in a kind of scene. You can work out where they all are. However, VSS analyzes short video clips flagged by an existing computer vision system that can say, oh, here's a car, here's a person. And then it can say, ask it questions by using a large language model, a vision large, a vision language model, in fact, that can say, you know, is this car doing a certain thing? Is this person doing a certain thing? So not only is it now got the visual stuff to detect and outline things, count them, you can also say, what's it doing? And you can ask the vision large language model about that. So VSS processes a very small clip of just a few seconds after the traditional uh, computer vision system has said, you know, there's now a person in this clip. Let's ask a question about it. And you ask the VLM some questions, yes or no, and then it can trigger an event based on that. OK, so here we have a demo and imagine this as a four stage pipeline. Over on the left here, we have the input, which is some cardboard boxes going down a conveyor belt. We then have a detection parameters which says that you should look for cardboard boxes. And then in the traditional uh, pipeline parameters, computer vision pipeline parameters, if you see one cardboard box, that's sufficient to trigger something in the uh, large language model, vision language model, which said you are a warehouse conveyor belt inspection system. You must inspect the cardboard box on the conveyor belt to look for signs of physical damage. OK, and basically when the traditional system spots a cardboard box, it then sends that little clip. There's a damaged one now just going down the conveyor belt. It sends that little clip over to the vision language model, which can answer that question. Here's another one about people crossing at an intersection. It's looking for people, that's what it's detecting. If it sees more than one person, it then wants to know, is the person crossing over on the white striped crosswalk or are they jaywalking? That's basically what it's asking. Then this is given to a back end and you can see here there's true and false. In one case, the person was crossing on the crossing and the other case they weren't. And then once you have this clip, you can actually ask it additional questions. So here we see the person crossing over and I'm now going to ask it a second question. Is there a blue car? Now we've just seen it go past, so we know there is. You can go ahead and ask it and it will analyze that very short clip where there was a person present in the video which was captured by the traditional computer vision pipeline and it'll analyze it and give me back an answer was there a blue car yes there is a blue car visible it appears on the right hand side of the road as it moves away from the camera and that's all coming from the uh, language model and now we go to the other clip where the person wasn't crossing on the uh, designated crosswalk and again we can ask it a question we can say how many yellow cars uh, vehicles are there in this video and it will go ahead and analyze it and you may think the answer is two there but in fact when you uh, watch the video back you'll see there were three uh, two taxis and one bus which is absolutely correct so this is an absolutely powerful thing you can actually get det object detection yes but then you can ask it questions about what's going on in the scene brilliant now with 128 gigabytes of RAM, 256 Blackwell CUDA cores and 14 ARM Neoverse CPU cores, the Jetson 4 is ideal for running large language models. It's also good at serving large language models to multiple users simultaneously using a system like VLLM. If you're not sure about VLLM, it's an open source high throughput inference server that's optimized for large language model serving. And it can do this because it uses techniques like paged attention and dynamic batching to manage GPU memory efficiently and therefore increase the throughput. So you can actually have eight simultaneous, 10 even more connections to one large language model and they'll all actually get back a good 
uh, response speed because of the techniques that are used inside of VLM, which is an open source project. And it runs, of course, on the Jetson Thor. So here is just some testing using single threaded, so we're not having multiple requests. So we're using things like llama.cpp and olama. Now, if you're using uh, OpenAI's GPT OSS, the 20 billion parameter version, Okay, and if you run that on a PC, like a Ryzen 5 9600X, just a CPU with no GPU, you're going to get about uh, nine tokens a second. Now, if you run that on the Jetson Thor, just the CPU, so still no GPU involved in here, that jumps up to 27 uh, tokens a second. So that just shows you the power of these 14 Neoverse uh, CPUs in there. Now, if we take a system like the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro, often used as a kind of a as a kind of a standard for how well computer consumer computer equipment can run these models we're in that way you get about 33 uh, tokens per second now when you get to the jetson 4 this is cpu and gpu all those cuda cores in that blackwell uh, nvidia gpu this jumps up to 50 tokens per second so this is the open ai open source 20 billion parameter model 50 tokens a second. Now, because it's got 128 gigabytes of unified memory, yeah, then the Jensen Thor development kit can run the 120 billion version of the OpenAI model. And my testing has shown that can give you at least 35 tokens per second. Okay, so here I'm on the command line of the uh, Jetson Thor, and I'm going to use llama.cpp to actually uh, process the large language model. As you saw there, I'm loading up the uh, OpenAI 120 billion parameter version. You can see there it's 60 uh, gigabytes, and it's all of it's being offloaded onto the GPU, but this is with the unified uh, memory. So that'll take a second to upload. Now I'm going to ask it one of my traditional questions that I ask uh, these LLMs in my testing, and that is if you have two hourglasses, one that measures 10 minutes, another last measures five minutes, can you use the two hourglasses to measure 15 minutes? And this is a thinking model, so it's going to go through all of its thinking process, trying to work out the different ways to solve the problem. And then in the end, it will give us its answer, which it actually gets correct. And that is that you just need to flip the five minute timer three times. Actually, this one says you should flip the 10 minute one as well, but it actually doesn't do any good, but it still gives you the 15 minute result, which is what it needs. But the really important thing here is the speed that this is working at. So we're looking at 120 billion parameter model running here on the Jetson Thor. Okay, so the Jetson Thor delivers over 2000 teraflops using FP4 sparse, and that's 7,000 times higher AI performance compared to the original Jetson TK1, uh, which had 0.3 teraflops in 32-bit from 2014. So we've come a long way in 10 years. It offers seven and a half times higher AI compute and three and a half times better power efficiency than the previous generation, which is the Jetson AGX Orin. I have a review of that also here on this channel. And it's available today to order or to pre-order, depending on when you catch this, uh, for $3,499. Okay, so there you have it, the Jetson Thor Development Kit. There's a link in the description that will take you straight through to the product page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.